This action from round one of the Bridgestone production cars proudly brought to you by Audi. The new grid, a new season, new colors and sponsors, and a couple of guys stepping out of different categories up into the big show. It's going to be an outstanding race for 2014, but you don't win the championship in the first race, Matt. No, and historically, this has been a very, very good track for the BMWs, but they have really been smoked. Gavin Cronier has done a great job stepping out of the front-wheel drive Mini Cooper into the rear-wheel drive BMW, but look at Simon Moss. He is going to be very aggressive and a man to watch out for. Back into the start of the Class Ts, no surprise to see the Minis running straight here also raising eyebrows is the lack of sponsorship on the BMWs have you seen that yeah well you can't miss it I mean plain white car racing we talk about it at the beginning of the season it happens over almost all of the categories but it's the first time in a very long time that I've seen it happening at the high end of the class A's of British on production cars and what a team this is going to be for Audi Henny Krunewald teaming up with Gennaro Bonafidi veteran and well, almost rookie yeah and uh, Gennaro has really cut his teeth in that car he knows exactly how to get it set up and the master Henny Krunewald will be extremely strong look at this here comes Thompson sweeping around the outside it's going to be something to watch out for and the Fords also seem to pick up the pace in lap one yeah both those middies and also the uh, Chevrolet crews from Michael van Rooyen have had issues here at this racetrack before hopefully holding thumbs is going to be a good day for both have you seen Graham Nathan by the way who leads things out and there's a problem on the Ford that's Gary Fomato's Ford he looked like he was really on the pace and he had made some passes early in the race but there's a crucial problem happening in the Ford and that is going to be limping around and parking. That's going to leave just Dumini to pick up the pieces, but he has been battling for form and pace thus far at round number one, and certainly the penalty shoving him all the way to the back of the pack has left him fighting it out with Cooper and the new kid, Ryan Road. Out of turn three, and it's one of the fastest parts of the uh, racetrack, and of course the two Audi still out there. Oh, look at this, a nice little move, and Stevens fighting back against Faree in a big way. Well, Faree has really been struggling for form, but we know that the BMWs have incredible top-end power, and up the hill is often where they show it but it's been on the handling that they've really battled to throw in a good lap for trying to move around the outside and that's Cronier who out qualified him who has been shoved not one but two places back so Michael Steven is running away but it looks like he's starting to hold back a little bit because for is definitely piling on the pace now 10 laps so we consider this to be a sprint race we've got a longer one coming up a little bit later on and will weather conditions prevail and will they hamper some of the cars out there well look at it it looks like we're seeing a Sassol Audi racing team advert out front because they are banging in qualifier lap after qualifier lap back in the class T's and Cooper is looking strong this year well speaking about Cooper it's very disconcerting for us because we're used to seeing Grand Nathan in that bright orange GTI and now we've got Ryan Cooper in a semi orange vehicle so let's not confuse those two the only difference is Nathan's out front yeah on board was Charles Smallberger the man stepping out of polos he had a rough season last year stepping up into the golf GTI this time around and you saw while we were on board we swept past and saw Fomato parked on the sideline Faree is still sticking to the outside line I think he's been watching way too much NASCAR trying to sweep the fast moves around the outside but cannot make the move on third out of five and into six and of course as we're seeing right now the two Audis and this is pretty much the gap that they had in qualifying yeah they spoke about it they've been separated by something like a thousandth of a second the whole way through the weekend so it's not the fact that Gennaro can't pass and it's not the fact that Henny is holding him up that is just the gap on board with Cooper showing how greasy it is out there and you can see he's really battling the front end looks like it's forcing out a little bit as they sweep through turn number one he has done particularly well coming from a motorcycle background and last year was his blood into uh, production cars and uh, essentially a motorcycle rider but he is handing that golf as you say a little twitchy but he's done a sterling job yeah he is running incredible pace and look at that he's just got good form coming into the season the car I thought it sounded a little bit rough there and certainly wasn't making the power down the straight that he wanted to and Dumini has just slid by Dumini flying the flag for Ford at the moment and of course they are buoyant because they've done okay and they'll be looking for more but it's only round one now we see Sean Dumini and under pressure from in this shot it is uh, Ron Cooper in that GTI Golf yeah, he's got a really good setup on the right air machine and uh, as far as the manufacturers go we've got four of the key players out there not too many shots out there of the Chevy Cruze but it is running good in the hands of Marco Van Rooyen now we're finally seeing a little bit of daylight showing between the top two front runners in the class A's Henny Krunewald has pulled out almost half a second by this stage out of his teammate Genaro Bonafidi
So, will it be big points for the blooding of the new Sassel livery? Of course, Henny Carnival in charge right now. Gennaro Bonafini in second. Johan Free in that BMW. So weird not to see all the big brand sponsorship on their car. On board right now in the other BMW, Gavin Cronier is chasing down Michael Stephen. Yeah, you talk about weird. For me, this is the weirdest thing I've seen. Michael Stephen, the reigning champion, the man who has almost no faults on any tracks around the racing that we do in South Africa, and he is battling to hang on to fourth place right now. His uh, partner, of course, in crime is none other than the uh, junior Moss and replacing Chopsapuka in this series as well. We will see, probably because we know Terry Moss, the DNA of a, a pure-blooded motor racer. Will his son have that same DNA? Yeah, I think it's going to be one of the stories to watch out for. Certainly on the coastal circuits, Simon Moss will be coming through, but right now he has no answer, and he's in the background. Chopsapuka's previous car, easily recognizable by the bright red wing mirrors. So on board with Gavin Cron, yeah, a big step up, as you mentioned earlier on, Matt, from the minis and that front wheel drive and, uh, well, we've got rear wheel drive and uh, I think he's doing a sterling job at the moment. He will find his feet. Yeah, the BMW seem to have come on as there's a little bit more temperature has come into the tracks. You can see that from Faree's pace. He pushed on very hard. But there, coming out of turn number three, the back end of the BMW is wagging ever so slightly. So Gavin Cron, yeah, still trying to figure out the big beast, of course, that is the BMW. And Michael Stephen must be scratching his head right now going, where do we go from here and why is this BMW all over me at the moment? I mean, he is a three-time reigning champion, defending it for the fourth, and that Audi right now, well, they need to get more out of it. Yeah, Michael Stephen, of course, he's put a lot of work into these cars. He knows them head to toe, Whoa! as we see. Cronier just light up the back end of the BMW, and that's Simon Moss sweeping through. We were talking about the prep on the engine Audis, almost untouchable through the years, but of course, the Sassel Audis, now prepped by Vic Maharaj. He knows what's happening, and he's got a lot of time he puts into those cars and they've just come out of the season from off-season testing, coming to round number one. Perfect. Well, he's a genius, and I totally agree with you, and he's done a lot for the teams, but he's also helped with their driving, getting the most out of the car, not over-driving these cars, but just knowing how to drive them. Look what is happening in the Class Ts as well. This is the battle for second place on the road. We just saw Graham Nathan go through shot. The Chevy Cruze of Michael Van Royen rock solid all the way through in second, and then a bit of team formation flying with Thompson, and now Ryan Rhodes running in the four spot. Yeah, well, I mean, Thompson's got to be the danger and one to look for because he had a really good season. They had a little bit of difficulties with the cars, but, you know, really, essentially, they were really strong. And look how strong the right foot is on Johan Ferry, lighting up the back end of the BMW. He has closed up hand over fist on the back wheel of Gennaro Bonafidi, trying to fight for that second place, but no one is going to get to Henny Kronovolt. And on his return to production car racing, Henny takes the flag. Well done to Gennaro Bonafidi and Johan Free flying the flag for BMW. Not a bad result, and it gets underway for round one of the Bridgestone Production Car Championship. Nathan is going to pick this up, but a good result for Van Royen. Yeah, in the sprint race, very solid times the whole way through. Thompson, I expected him to start coming through, but obviously the setup on the Williams Hunt Chevy Cruze, faultless, and he's come in with a really strong package. But the reigning champion is going to tick one off the top of the list very early on in the season, taking race number one win at round number one of the Super Series Bridgestone Production Cars Class T goes to Nathan. So first blood to the Audi Sassel Racing Team, Kronovold, Bonafidi and Steven, and Faree was penalised excessive boost. Teddy Kronovold, you look delighted. Probably, maybe, possibly could I say the best production car you've ever driven? Certainly, you know, it's uh, first of all to get uh, the front row for the Audi Sassel Racing Team between me and Gennaro yesterday, it was amazing and to start off now with a 1-2, it's exactly what we're looking for and yeah, certainly just the best production car I've driven over the years and uh, those first few laps of the car was really so stable and balanced and, and a joy to drive, so uh, I'm looking forward to the next race and congratulations to Gennaro, he kept it tight there, keeping me honest all the way to the end. Yeah, no pressure whatsoever, I mean, both of you looked in control. Yeah, I know it was. It was a great performance from, I think, both of us, you know. I said to Henny in the beginning, I said, just go, you know, let's get away from the pack and then we can sort it out, you know, the end of the race and just maintain the, the, the gap. And so what we did. Uh, we managed to stay one, two out of, the, out of the second corner, which left other guys fighting behind us and, and we got a nice gap. And then from then on, it was just managing the, the temperatures and the, and the placing. So I'm, I'm very happy and congrats to Henny. First win in Audi Colors with Sassel Racing. So it's a, it's a formidable team, I think. In the first race of the 2014 season in the Class T's, Graham Nathan shows good for his VW SA colours ahead of Van Royen Thompson. Cooper ran good in fourth place ahead of Charles Smallberger. Ryan Road gets his sixth place ahead of Formato and Dumini. The Ford's battling. You must be delighted. I'm over the moon. Uh, yeah, great, uh, great start to the way, the way we want to do it. Great season. Um, 
all credit though to my team, Dean, Jeffrey uh, and Chris. Great job, Peter, everybody that's backed me, Mike Rowe. And, and I must just say thanks to all the, the guys who drive Volkswagens in this country because without this brand, we just wouldn't be able to go out there, do what we do, put it on the front and give everybody a hell of a hard time.